Hello, welcome to the instructions for how to make a striped scarf. One of the set of beginners instructions, first step instructions for learning how to knit with Warm Hugs Devon. What you can see in front of you are the first things that I'm going to need in order to make the striped scarf. So everybody will have a neutral colour. And this is the neutral colour and everybody will have two balls of an alternative colour. So my two balls are in green. This is an amazing yarn. It's a new yarn out from um, King Colt. Let's put it out the right way, you can see it. Anyway. And it's made, as you can see down here, from recycled yarn. It's a recycled Aran yarn. So as well as having a lovely opportunity to learn how to knit, you're actually not harming the environment by doing this. In fact, you are um, keeping away from the large companies and you're making something unique, which you or somebody special to you will love wearing. So we are ready to get started. And the first thing we need to do is we start with one of the, the main colours. OK, so we don't need the other two. I just need one ball of yarn in one of my main colours, mine being green. Let's move the others out of the way don't need those for now I just need this one so what I'm going to do is I remove the band around it always useful to keep these bands they've got the uh, washing instructions for for the wool on them so it's always very useful to keep that for, for later so let's move that out of the way and first things first I need to find the end of my yarn virtually always tucked into one of the ends so let's pull that one that one looks like it could be something oh yeah there it is there's the end of my yarn and I'm ready to get knitting I've removed the knitting needles from the the packet so we've got two five millimeter knitting needles and the size of the knitting needle sets the size of the stitch that you're going to be knitting with so and that's why it's really important that we don't pull the stitches too tight and don't have them too loose because if they're too tight the stitches will end up too small and the item will be small because the size of these sets the size of the stitches that's what you want you want the the tension the tightness of your knitting to be dictated by the size of the needles rather than you pulling it too tight okay so knitting is all about being relaxed and it's really good for forgetting other things there's a lot of counting involved and there's a lot of just being aware of pattern and both those things are really good for your mental well-being so we've got the knitting needles out of the of the packet the next thing you need to do is you need to measure a length of yarn from your your ball which is a meter long so I've, I've got a piece of yarn about a meter long because what we're going to do now is we're going to cast on our our stitches for for knitting with so what we need to do first of all is you you have a piece about a meter long and I've got my fingers where where the meter is and what I do then is I put the wool around my index finger. Okay, so it goes around my index finger until it crosses. Show you again. I'm holding I'm holding the rest of the wool, wool with my fingers. It goes around my index finger until it crosses. And then very gently you take it off of your finger and the piece of wool wool coming from the ball, you push that just gently through that loop and pull it tight so you end up with a little loop with a slip knot at the bottom and if I pull that slip knot it will come undone so I can show you again so I put it over the top of my index finger all the way around until it crosses very gently pull it off and then push the piece of wool coming from the ball just through the loop and then gently pull the ends tight until I have the loop and that's going to be my first stitch 
So I put it on my needle, pull my ends gently until that stitch just fits on the needle. Not too tight. If it's too tight, you always know when something's too tight. It, it They become really squeaky and they're hard to move along the knitting needle. So, you know. But if they're too loose, they'll fall off. Now this one, if I hold it upside down, it's not sliding off. So I know it's not too loose and it shouldn't be squeaky or too hard to move up and down the needle. So then I've got the rest of the tail of wool in my left hand and the wool from the ball of wool in my right. Now, if you're left-handed, you'll do it the other way around, probably. Not always, not necessarily, but probably you'll, you'd prefer to have the ball of wool in your left hand and the end of the wool in your right. I'm right-handed. I'm so right-handed. I can't even attempt to do it with my left hand. I'm sorry. But so we've done the first stitch. We've got to do 40 stitches. We've got to cast on 40. So I've got one stitch cast on. So what we do again is the wool from the tail of wool. This goes around my index finger again, crossing it over. And this time I'm putting that on my needle. Let me show you again. It's around my finger, crossed over. Then I put the needle through that loop while it's still on my finger. Then the end of wool from the ball goes around the knitting needle. I lift that loop still on my finger off the end, take it off my finger and then very gently pull the long end, this loose end, pull it a bit tighter. So I've got two stitches on. I go for another one again, this loose end around my finger till it crosses over. You can see the cross. Put the knitting needle through that loop Go around with the yarn from the ball, around the needle, pull that loop off over the end of the knitting needle. Oop, there it goes. Gently pull it tight. There we go, I've got three stitches done. I've got to carry on doing that until I've got 40. I need 40 stitches. So over my finger, turn it round. Needle through the loop, round the end of the needle with the yarn. Pull the loop over the top of the end of the needle and pull it tight. Four stitches and again five stitches. Okay, so you need to carry on until you've got 40 stitches. Keep counting them, keep counting them all the time. You need to know you've got 40. So here I am, I've got 20 stitches on so far. So I usually try and count in twos when I'm counting them. So two four, six, eight, ten. And then I'm going to keep that finger there. I know I've got ten there. I'm going to keep that finger at that point. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Move that finger up there. I know I've got twenty. Twenty stitches on my needle. Very gently as you're knitting, pull them down the needle so they don't you don't want them falling off the end. Okay. You don't want the problem of dropping stitches. So keep them away from the end of the needle. Okay, so I've got 20, 20 more to go. I've got my 40 stitches. I'm going to count them again just to make sure. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Keep my finger there. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Finger there. Two, four, six, Eight, thirty. Keep my finger there. Two, four, six, eight, forty. Got my forty stitches. Lovely. I still got a bit of that tail left over. Now to keep it tidy, I'm going just to fold that piece of wool in half. Fold it in half again, and then just make a small loose knot in it. This end we will sew in at the end, so we won't have something loose dangling, but just do it gently. And it just will help you to remember which piece of wool you're knitting with. I don't want you to start knitting with this tail of wool. I want you to knit with the ball of wool that you've got here. So the piece of wool that's coming straight from the ball. So what we've got 
so we have 40 stitches cast on and again just like i said just now they shuffle up and down quite happily they're not squeaky you always know when something is too tight it they you hear like a squeaky sound and you can feel a squeaky vibration coming through the knitting needle when you're moving them up and down but they're also not too loose so they don't fall off the end okay so i've got my 40 cast on i've checked several times i know it's 40 so what i do is i'm going to start with doing knit and purl now so i'm going to pass that needle over into my other hand i've got the needle here with no stitches on in my right hand now when you do a lot of knitting a lot of knitting starts with rib okay it's it's this bit of around the end of sleeves at the bottom of jumpers which makes those little bits just that little bit tighter okay just and it also it's a very neat end of, of your knitting so we're going to learn how to rib as well as learning how to purl and knit. Now there's nothing wrong in doing both at the same time. I think knitting, just using the knitting stitch or purling, just using the purl stitch, is very boring. It's not useful. It's not what you do in the vast majority of knitting. You use a combination of the two. And you will learn much quicker what the difference is between the two if you're using both at the same time. This is not difficult. I would not give you something which is too difficult to do. So don't worry. Right, I've pulled a little bit of extra yarn off of the wool, not too much. And we're going to start with a knit stitch. So when you knit, what you do is you put your knitting needle up through the loop. See, it's going in an upwards direction and it's behind the other knitting needle. I'll show that again it goes up through the loop that's already on my knitting needle the first one goes up through that loop and it goes behind the knitting needle that i'm holding in my left hand then just gently i've got a very gentle hold of this yarn in my right hand very gently just take it around the back of the knitting needle and then through the gap between the two you can almost feel at the end, you, well you heard it there, my knitting needles went clunk. You can feel a clunk when it goes into place. Pulling it gently, not hard, very gentle hold. And then the knitting needle that I've just put the yarn on, the one in my right hand, I pull it backwards, I pull it down, and then up. And I've done my first stitch, my first knit stitch. I'm going to do a knit stitch again. Okay, this is a rib pattern where it's got two knit and two purl, two knit and two purl right to the end. So one knit. The next one is another knit stitch. It goes up through the stitch, goes in behind the other knitting needle. The yarn goes around the back of that needle, in between the two of them, and then the needle in my right hand comes down through that stitch on my left one and then up to pull it off. So I've got two knit stitches. Okay, two little loops. Those are two knit stitches on there. Now to do purl, so I've done my two knit stitches of knit. To do purl, I'm going to pull that yarn that's coming from the ball. I pull it around to the front of the needle. So it's now at the front of the needle. Because to do purl, I go down with my knitting needle. I'm not going up, I go down between the, the stitch and my needle's coming to the front this time. Front. This piece of yarn, just like before, it goes around the back and this time I pull my knitting needle back and up and I've got a purl stitch. I do need another one. So I put my needle down Bring the yarn around the back of it, push, I use my thumb quite a lot to help me, push that needle back and up. And if I show you now, you can see the difference between the two stitches. The two knit stitches, you can see 
the yarn coming out through the middle of them. They're loops with the yarn coming through the middle. The purl stitches look much more like bumps. And if you go and have a look at any of your clothes where you've got a rib at the cuff or at the bottom, you'll see that there are two flatter stitches and there are two bump stitches. The bump ones actually are the ones which sink down. When you when you when you finish your ribbing, you'll see that they're the ones which are which go lower, and the ones the knit ones are the ones which are raised at the stitches. Doesn't look like it now, but it will be. So your yarn was here when you finished purl. So to do the next two knit stitches, you take the yarn around the back of the needle again, and remember knit it goes up at the back the knitting needle you're putting in yarn around the back down and up off the end another one of those knit so it goes through the up around the back the yarn goes around the back down and off i'm just when i'm doing that i'm just pushing these stitches up a little bit so they're not right at the very end of my needle, but they're easier to get at. So my piece from the ball of wool, I'm going to do two power ones. I'll bring the yarn to the front again. So my needle goes down to the front. So through the stitch, down through the stitch to the front of the other needle. Yarn around the back, push it back and up. And there it goes off. And again, down through the front, around back and off. So what I've got is a pattern. I've got two knit, two purl, two knit, two purl. And I'm going to go on that way along through these until I get to the end and I end up with two knit stitches. I finished my first row of rib using the main colour, the green colour for me a different colour for you. But I finished it and as we've said before it's gone knit, purl, knit, purl. I'm counting in twos, remember it's in twos. Knit, purl, 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 knit, purl. So I've ended up with two purl stitches. So I've finished my first row. What you need to do is 11 rows of rib. So I've done one. So to do the next one, I turn the needle around, put it in my other hand, my left hand, pick up the one with no stitches on in my right, and I do exactly the same again. Um, again, you watch me, I'm pushing the, the stitches just gently towards the end, not right at the very end, not where they're likely to slip off, but towards the end, just before... You see, it's just a bit wider there and then it tapers down to a point. So just at the end of the widest part. And so it's exactly the same. So knit two, so that's up through the stitch towards the behind the needle where the stitches are. Yarn around the back and knit one. And then again, the knit two, needle up at the back of the other one, yarn around the back knit two and to purl you bring it around the front of that needle again needle down to the front yarn around purl one needle down to the front yarn around purl two and take the yarn to the back and you're starting to see Look, remember I said it's the knit stitches which will be raised and you see they're looking slightly higher and the pearl stitches are slightly lower. And this is what will form the rib. So again, yarn to the back, up, round the back, knit one, needle up at the back of the other needle, knit two, yarn to the front. Needle down to the front, pearl one. Needle down to the front, Pearl two. And you can really start to see now. Look, see the pattern. This is why doing things in a pattern, using pearl and knit at the same time, is really useful. You can see if you've gone wrong, 
you can see you've gone wrong because you won't be able to see a pattern starting to develop like that. And do you know what? If you've gone wrong, there's nothing wrong. At the moment, it's not a big deal. It hasn't taken you that long, although you might disagree with me. You might say, no, actually, it's taken me ages. But in the grand scheme of things, if you're knitting a very long scarf, which is going to use an investment of time, what we've done so far hasn't taken that long. And if you need to, you can just pull your knitting needle out, pull it right back, to, you know, rip out all the stitches and go back to the beginning and start again. I have done that so, so many times. Sometimes because I've made a mistake and sometimes you can rectify your mistakes, but you can't always. But sometimes because I've got three cats and cats love wool and they will play with my wool if I'm not careful. I've learned now. I don't leave it anywhere that they can grab hold of it, but they will play with it. And I've come in and the rooms looked like a cobweb with wool everywhere. And everything's been pulled off the needles and I've had to start again, sometimes when I've done a lot of knitting and invested a lot of time. So don't worry, do it now. If you need to do it now, do it now and start again. It's better that and to get it right than to be dissatisfied with what you've done. That's what I find anyway. So I'm going to go to knit. So you're on around the back and knit two. Knit two. Yarn to the front and purl two. Yarn to the back and knit two. Yarn to the front and purl two. I'm going to have to stop, push the stitches gently up, and then one, two. Okay, and you can start to see your pattern your rib pattern emerging. You've got to do this until you've completed 11 rows. This is row number two, okay? So you can start to see the rib pattern emerging at 11 rows in total. We're on row number two. When you finished your 11 rows of rib, this is what it will look like. So you've got 40 stitches still on there. And it it looks, if you look at it from the bottom, it looks like a wave. And if you see what I was saying earlier, the bits which are raised are the knit, knit stitches and the bits which are lower are the purl stitches. So and it looks like it goes up and down all the way across when you look at it from the base. And that, if you look at it, it's, I won't pull it too close to the end of my stitch, my needle, but if I pull it down the other way, if you look at it, it sort of stretches and then goes back on itself. It gives a very beautiful end to the scarf. It will look lovely with that end on the end. So we've got our 11 rows. If you are ever worried about oh, I've lost count or anything like that, you can keep a tally as you're knitting if that's any use to you. But the other thing to do is you can count and the easiest ones to count are the purl stitches. So if I pull that a little bit closer, you can count the purls. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the stitch which is right under the needle here, eleven. So I've got eleven rows. And because it's an odd number as well, this is always, because that was when we started, that was the first row that we went across here. Went across here. So this was on right at the base on the right hand side when we started so we went across that way so this to end up with this back here it's always going to be an even number so it's, we know it's an odd number of rows knitted because it's on the opposite side okay so we've done our 11 rows so the next thing we need to do is we're going to start 
the main pattern of knit and purl that we're going to be using for the rest of the main body of the scarf. So the first thing we have to do is to change colour. Okay, so we're going to be doing two rows in natural. So the natural colour that everybody's got is this one. Okay, so we're going to do two rows in natural. So take off the, the band around the wool. Find the end of the wool there, which was just hanging there for me. It was quite easy. And if you find that complicated, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, in some ways it's going to become simpler now. So don't worry so much. It's, uh, it's going to be a simpler stitch, but you still need to be very aware of the pattern that you're following. Now, there are two ways of doing this. Because when you change to a different colour, we're going to be, you can either cut this, which I'm going to tell you to do, but that is a lot of sewing in um, at the end to finish off the threads. There is another way of doing it, which I will show you how to do later on, maybe. Maybe not on this one though, not on this scarf. I think the easiest thing to do is to cut the thread on this one because it will show too much because it's okay when you've got inside um, you can but basically what you would be doing is you'd be carrying the, the wool on up past the other next two rows but on a scarf you you look at both sides you see both sides of it and I don't want anything to spoil the beauty of this one so we've gone as far as we can with this colour so we're going to swap to, to the natural colour now so the first thing I do is I cut this and I cut it so that I've got about 10 centimetres 12 centimetres of thread left just like that move this one out of the way and what I'm going to be doing is starting with the natural colour next okay so I push this towards the end now, what we're going to do now is the first row, we're going to be knitting all of the stitches on there. So, start with the needle. Now, if I put this in here, if you look, that's going to start to make that stitch far too big. So, I'm pulling, I pull that back to the normal size again, not too tight, but normal size. What I'm going to do then is I'm just going to catch hold of that thread. In behind between my fingers so it doesn't pull out again so I'm going to knit a whole row so I've got my needle in ready to knit got my new color yarn ready to go and I put the yarn just like before it's got an end again I put it just over the top of my needle and if you look I'm holding this end with this hand and that end with the other hand. So there's that one being held there and that one being held there. So I take that off. So I've knitted a stitch. Let's just pull that a little bit tighter, that stitch, one underneath. And then I'm going to put that other end from that one in there. So those fingers here in behind are holding the two ends. So then knit again and it's going to be knit stitches all the way along here so needle up in behind around and down needle up in behind around and down once you get so far you can let go of the threads maybe just make sure that they're pulled tight enough so that you haven't got any massive stitches showing but we'll need to check on those again when we get back to the end of the next row. So keep knitting. So needle up in behind, thread around, down and up. Up in behind, down and up. And if you look, you can see the two colours. So I knit all the way along here until I get to the end. 
or 40 stitches on it. We've come to the end of the row, knitted every stitch all the way along. It's looking very nice, the, the green and the natural colour. I like that combination, it's looking lovely. And now the next row is purl every stitch on the row. So put the needle into my left hand, ready to purl. Got the empty needle in my right hand. It will be the other way around if you're left-handed. And this time it's purl. So remember, you put your needle down through the stitch, the yarn around, and then it back and up, down through the stitch, needle in front of the other one, around, back and up, needle through, round, back and up. So we're doing all purls all the way along to the end. And then when we get to the end, I'll show you what to do with those ends which are, are dangling there. They're not difficult, but you just need to know how to do it. I've got the last few stitches in this purl row to do, but before I even get to the end, if I if you look at my row, you see this massive stitch I've got on the end? It, it's, it's too big. So if I pull that thread that's left there, it will pull it back to a more reasonable size. Just want them to be the same size as the other stitches. It's because you've got two loose ends here, that's why those are looking a bit big. But it'll be fine once we get past this next bit. So I keep on doing pearls all the way to the end. And then just need to be careful on the last couple of stitches. So that one didn't do. Go there. Let's do that one. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undo a stitch because I've just noticed that my thread didn't go through there properly. So useful tip. I'd split the thread when I knitted that stitch. So what I've done is I've pulled out the stitch from the row before. If I put that needle through there, I can pick this stitch back up. I'm going to show you how to do this in the troubleshooting guide. Okay, so I've seen it in real life because I, I did it with here. So let's purl, purl, and then we come to the last stitch. If I just purl into this one, it's going to expand the, the stitch again. Look starts to pull it so again well let's before I even get in there I'm just going to grab hold of these two bits of wool with my thumb and one of the fingers and then I'll knit into this one and then they won't get too big and if they do get a bit big I just pull them gently again okay so if I turn it around again You'll see that here I've got my rib stitch and then I've got two rows of what you call stockinette stitch. Basically on the right side it just looks like they've all been knitted but you haven't. What you've done is you've knit a row and purl a row and you've just got the two, the two loops intersecting. Okay, so the next row, I'm going to change our colour again, I'm afraid. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, we're going to have a lot of ends here to sew in at the end. So, But don't worry about it, we don't need to do it now. So what I do, get my scissors, I cut this one. And I'm going back to my green. So my main colour, whatever your main colour is, mine's green. So again, it's going to be knit a whole row. But again, I've got an end here. I'm putting it between those fingers there at behind. Just pull my empty needle through. Put that one up because it's going to be knit a whole row. I've got the end of this one. Put it over the top. So just like you're doing any knitting, but I'm holding both ends with that hand and the end from the other colour. 
underneath so needle up through in behind the one with the stitches on pull it down and push it off then I'm going to pass this end through to that finger so I've just got my wool wool from the ball in here and then carry on knitting all the way along and once I've done a few stitches I can let go of those ends and I keep knitting until I get to the end and if you look it's looking really lovely looking really nice the combination of the two colours is going to be worth all the work that you've done with it so knit right to the end finish that row of knit stitches so you can see the way that the colours are starting to to show against each other very natural colours these are they're beautiful really beautiful dye colours very natural ones so turn it around now there's a difference now, now you'd think we're about to do a, a purl stitch but we're not follow the pattern read the pattern we're in row number four of the pattern and it actually tells you to knit the next row before I go any further if you look these one stitches at the end are starting to look a bit big the last two ends I'm just going to pull those a bit tighter again and I'm going to knit all the way along so I've just knitted a row I'm knitting another row so needle up thread around and I'm going to knit back across here and you'll see how the pattern evolves in a minute and you'll understand why we're doing this so again knit all the way along until you get to the end of the row got to the end of the fourth row with knit stitches and when I turn it over onto the right side you can see it's starting to look like this but look oh you can see the I have back on the right side you can see a pearl row here because we've just knitted it on the wrong side and on the right side it looks like pearl so we've got three rows which look like knit stitch like here in the rib three rows that look like the raised bits of the rib now we've got a row of pearl coming through here so we've knitted four rows from the pattern so we're on fifth row from the pattern the fifth row from the pattern tells us to purl the next row so we're going to have the purl stitches showing at the front again so we've got to purl the next row and then we come back on the other side and knit it just like we've just done no change in color thank goodness we don't have to change our color this time so we're going to purl a row and then we're going to knit a row and then we've done the six rows of our pattern and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment I finished the six rows of the pattern now so three rows of what is known as stockingette stitch where you've got the loops showing like this linked into with each other and then three rows of what's called reverse stockinette stitch basically if I turn it over the stockinette stitch is there on the back and what you've got showing on the right side on the front of the scarf are what looks like three rows of, of pearl but it's not we follow the pattern so if you look at the bottom we've got our rib what this is going to look like is it's going to look like rib but rather than running vertically this is going to run horizontally across the scarf each stripe is going to be look like a, a rib pattern going across the, the side so at the bottom where we've got the wavy look like that at the bottom we're going to have that wavy look up the side of the scarf you can't see it at the moment we haven't got enough rows but these six rows are what the whole pattern of this scarf is is made up from 
So these six rows follow, you follow this, every, keep going now with this until you have done, so it's a, quite a lot of rows now to do. So you've got to carry on in this pattern until you've done 424 rows. Wow. Wow. It means that your scarf's about 170 centimetres long. So it'd be a lovely long scarf. And be, this this rib here is a very warm, because it because it's sort of wavy like that, it catches um, air in it and it, it will be a very warm stitch to, to wear around your neck. And so the rib going horizontally will be warm in the same way. So starting this pattern again, back to the natural colour. So cut the green, join back in the, the natural colour again and back to row number one and that is knit all of the stitches. So again, hold that behind, knit the needle up and behind. I hold this piece of thread in this hand over the top and I'm going to knit again. So I've done six rows in this pattern. Put that thread in behind my fingers. This is row number seven, but 424. Lot of rows to be done. So happy knitting. I'm going to put some troubleshooting things at the end of the online video. If you've got any trouble with drop stitches and things like that, I'll be showing you how to, to remedy that. So don't worry, it's what we all do. You've just seen I had to had to do something because I'd split the wool and it wasn't um it wouldn't have looked right. It would look like I've got a very thin stitch. So look at the troubleshooting part of the video. And if you've got any trouble as you're going along, but don't worry about it. Okay, relax, enjoy it, keep counting. It'll keep your mind off of all the worries that you've got in the world. And enjoy your knitting. Relax with it. And I'll see you in a little while and we'll look and see how the pattern starts to evolve, okay, as we go along. This is the scarf as I've knitted it so far. It's looking lovely. I'm really pleased with it. It's a lovely pattern. Um, because we're knitting in sort of horizontal um, rib stitch, it's nothing's curling up at the edges. It's actually sitting very nice and flat. Let me take my wool off there. Sitting nice and flat on there. As you can see the rib pulling the the bottom together very nicely. It looks lovely. It's really nice. Really nice. As you noticed, I've just taken the wool off the end of my ball. And this is what I do as a means of stopping my knitting falling off when I finished knitting for a little while I put the wool on the end of the balls and keeps the needles both together and it keeps, stops the knitting from falling off the end. As I always say, prevent a problem rather than trying to sort it out. Well, well done. Still a lot of rows left to, to knit. It's at least with this pattern, you know you're in sixes. So if I count the end of each rib section, so 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. I've knitted 42 stitches. Just about 400 left to go. So 400 rows left to go, not stitches, sorry. So I'm on my way. Well done. Keep it up. I'm going to show you now how to sew in the ends. We've got so many ends starting to, to uh, appear on the side as we're cutting the yarn and starting a different colour. You can do this, you can save this right until the very end if you want, but for me I, I just prefer to do it a little bit at a time as I'm going along because that number of ends at the end is gonna, gonna do my head in to have to sew all those in in one go. So I'm gonna sew in a few at a time. 
So in your pack, you'll find um, a, a knitting <coughs> sewing needle, strangely enough. It's not, as, it's not as sharp as other sewing needles. It's a bit more blunt to save the, save splitting the wool when you're going through it. As you'll have noticed, there's the correct side of my knitting. I've turned it over, so I've got the wrong side facing up now. And this is the side we're going to be sewing our ends into. So I'm just going to, I'm going to see if I can find the first one that I cut here. I don't know which one is it, that one or that one, that one. Okay, so I'm going to start with the very first one that I cut where I cut the green rib. So I'm going to thread the needle. These needles have got lovely big eyes. Even with my eyesight, I should be able to thread it. So there you go. Threaded the needle. And basically all we're going to do is weave this back in through. So it's virtually impossible. It's certainly not going to go through to the other side. It's, um, it's going to be invisible from the other side. So if I look at this stitch here, let me pull it up closer. See this bit of thread I've got threaded? It's it goes into that stitch there. Now what I'm going to do when I when I start um, threading this through, I need to make sure that I don't push it back through this loop because otherwise I'm undoing that stitch. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start by going through the stitch itself. And that'll tie it off quite nicely. So, and then on the wrong side, I'm going to try, because it's green thread, I'm going to go through the green thread. Okay, so I'm, all I'm doing is just picking up, I'm picking up tiny little stitches. If I'll start again so you can see, I'm just going through the back of some of the green wool, not going through to the other side. Just going, trying to go through the green, and then this threading through will be virtually invisible. If I pull that bit through now, I don't need to go much further than that. I think pull the, the end of the thread through. I think that's enough for that one. If I pull that end off, pull my knitting so that that is stretched out. That's not pulling my knitting too tight. And then I'm going to cut that end off. I'll just look at my scissors and I think I've put them somewhere else. So I'll cut that end off and that's that one done. I'll show you another one. So the next one is one of the natural colours. See these stitches looking a bit big. I'll pull the ends. I'll do them. So this one. Thread the needle. Gonna go past so you can see the stitch here, it's this one here, the first one. You can see it when I pull that, you see which is moving. So I'm gonna go up through that one. It's almost sort of locking it off so that it won't come undone. It's almost like a tying it in place. And then I'm just going to go through the white stitches this time. Just on this side. Making sure that my needle doesn't go through to the other side of the knitting. That's busy enough. Pull it through so I can get the end out. Pull the needle off, and then pull it. So I've just got two ends to to snip off there now. I've got enough through. Next white one to go, then a green one. And it's just that it will save you having to do all this at the end. So if you stop and start, keep on with your knitting, then thread this through, and then you won't have so much sewing off to do at the at the end. You just thought of 400 and something rows. I mean, how many ends are we going to have to sew in? There's just going to be far too many. So just better to do it now and then that end of my netting is looking quite neat now because that's got all those ends sewn in I've got a few more to do and then I'll carry on with knitting so keep going you're doing an excellent job
I've got to the point where I've finished all of my rows of pattern. I've got 170 centimeters of beautiful scarf looking really nice. And I actually really like the pattern on the reverse as well. I know people don't tend to show the reverse, but actually I think that looks very beautiful as well. So I'm not worried about um, which side of my scarf is showing. I've been sewing in all of my ends as I've gone along to now have to sit here and do every single end it would it would seriously um upset me so i've i've done it as i've gone along so the whole the whole of my scarf is made so apart from the rib on this end so remember we did the rib on the other end of the scarf and it's a very nice uh, way to start and finish your projects so I've got to put rib on this end. So I've finished my pattern and then I'll, if you're following the instructions on your pattern, the last two rows, it says just to do the last two rows in the neutral colour, um, which I've done. And I've cut off the end, so it's all ready to go. Oh, look there, see, I've dropped a stitch now while I'm talking to you. So you can show, see, me in action picking up my last stitch that i dropped so i dropped that one there off the end it just fallen off so put my little needle in there let's do the last one in pearl on that row okay so i just need to reconnect my main color yarn and start the uh, rib and to finish this end of the scarf. So that's where my end. What I always do is I hold it onto that end and the end that I've cut off in my fingers in behind. I just twist them between my fingers and hold on to them and then it's knit to. Feels like a long time ago we did this, didn't it? Knit two stitches and then purl two stitches. And once I get in this far, I can let go of those yarn ends. So knit two, purl two. Go around. Knit two, purl two. All the way along to the end of this. So I've arrived at the end of my first row of double rib. So I turn around and I start on the other side. So again, it's exactly the same. Knit two, curl two all the way to the end and you need to do 11 rows like this. So keep on going until you've completed 11 rows. So the 11 rows of double rib stitch done, completed and the last thing we need to do is cast off and then we'll have completed the scarf which is wonderful. So what we're going to do now, cutting off is really simple. First of all, you do two stitches as if you were carrying on a double rib stitch. So the first two stitches, oh, I've dropped a stitch. So let's pick that one up first. Let's turn around. I am, I am full of uh, dropping things at the moment. So let's put that one back on. Right, go back. So. As if I was going to carry on in double rip and knit two. Um, two. Then what you need to do is the first of those stitches, you put your, your needle here, the one which has got the stitches you're knitting on, through the first stitch that you knit knitted. And with the other hand, just pull gently 
on the yarn that you've just knitted the second stitch with just gently because what you do is you're going to pass the first stitch over the top of the second stitch and off of the end of the needle so this first one put your needle underneath it and pull it so it comes over the top of that stitch and over the top of the needle like that so I've only got one stitch left and all the way through casting off you're either going to have one or two stitches on this needle no more than that okay so I would normally have purled two stitches so I purl one I've got one st two stitches on here I'm going to take that down to one again exactly the same put my needle on this hand through the first stitch putting gently on the yarn pull it over the top of the stitch and off the end of the needle I would have purled the next stitch, so I carry on, I purl the next stitch. And again, now I've got two stitches. Needle through the first of the stitches, pull it over the top of the second stitch and off the end of the needle. See what it's starting to look like? That's the, the end of the scarf starting to appear. So the next two stitches I would have knitted, so I go to knit them. So knit the first can't have any more than two stitches so I take my needle through the first stitch over the stitch and off the end of the needle the re reason I'm pulling on the yarn is to stop this second stitch from going off the end it's the pulling on the yarn which stops that going off so and again around needle through the first stitch pull it over the second and off the end of the needle and then carry on until you've got all the way across and you've just got one stitch left on this needle I'm on my last few stitches here to cast off so let's finish off casting off the last few stitches on this scarf There we go, and the last one, so I cast that one off, so I've got one stitch left. So what I do then, is I cut my yarn, so I've got a bit of a tail rack ready to sew it in, make that loop a little bit bigger, push, let's put it in my needles, push the yarn, through the tail and just pull it that that little bit of yarn end there I will I will sew in with the needle so here I have my completed scarf I'm really happy with it it looks lovely it's a very long scarf so with that extra 11 11 rows We've got 180 centimetres of scarf. Beautiful. Looks really, really good. And it will be lovely and warm for whoever you choose to wear it, whether it's you, whether it is somebody in your family. They will really appreciate it. So well done. That was a lengthy project. It took a long time knitting that that length of scarf and if it, this is your first project you've done amazingly well okay keep up the good work see if you can try something else now some of the basic things that you might need help with uh, when you're knitting a, a stitch is coming off the needle so for example when i'm getting ready to knit the next row Quite often I push the, the stitches closer to the end of the needle and quite often, if I'm not careful, usually I try and keep my fingers on the end of the needle to stop them falling right off the end. But if I'm thinking of something else or my I'm distracted, this sort of thing can happen where some of my stitches have come off. Now, you are really lucky with this sort of wool. This is quite a, a stiff wool to knit with. And as a result, because it's not slippery, like some wools are, um, 
it's it's much stiffer so the actual stitches hold their shape a lot more so if they've just come off like this it's very simple just to thread them back onto the needle just do it gently don't go panicking and pulling the thread because that will pull them out but you know it is just very easy to push them back on and make sure that they're back on in the right shape like that so the right size push them up onto the thickest part of the needle to make sure they're the right size now if they did come off and you did panic and you're like, oh, I've known, I've pulled them out. So all you need to do, there is no reason that this is a problem. No reason. So they've come off. So I need to re-knit those stitches. So if I put these back over this side, again, if you look, the stitches which are there are holding their shape really well. They're not pulling back through. This is a lovely wool for somebody who is a beginner to start with because it is quite quite a stiff wool. It, um, it holds the shape of the stitch really well. So literally one stitch at a time, I put them back on the other needle. And then I re-knit them. Okay, so I've still got the wool here. I just re-knit them and I'll end up back in the same place as I was just now. Okay, so there it is, all ready, all ready to go. One thing that I've noticed with this wool, and I've had to correct myself a few times when I've been in the middle of knitting, is that um, it's very easy to, to split the wool. And I'll give, a, I'll give a, an example of this. Okay, so let's do a couple of ordinary stitches. And if you look at the wool, if I show you, the wool is made up of, a, of two strands. You see, if I pull it apart, you can see that those two strands are twisted to make a single piece of yarn. And um, what I've noticed is, I'm going to find it hard to do now, but I've done it a few times when I've been knitting, is I've gone like that. And what I've done is I've split the wool. So if I knitted this, it's like, you see, there's an extra loop appeared here. And it's because I haven't knitted both, both strands of the wool. So if I carried on, it wouldn't be a massive mistake, but I'd end up with a loop sticking out of my knitting, either at the front or the back of it. So if you do this and you notice there's this odd loop sticking out of your, your wool, all you do is pull your needle back out that stitch you've just done. Pull the thread out of that stitch and put this needle back through both strands. Okay. And then I'm in purl row at the moment. I just purl knit it just like I would normally have done. And no problem that the stitch is fine. It's just the same as all the others. And then the other one that I've noticed that I've done, and it is because of the two strands in the wool again, is sometimes when I'm knitting, it's more in a knit stitch rather than in a purl stitch. I'll see if I can show you on this. Is when I've gone through here, I've caught a bit of the stitch below. So I've gone through the, the natural coloured, but I've also caught in, if you look at it, I've caught in a bit of the green from the stitch below. And if I did it, it would be no, oh, it's not going to let me, <laughs> it doesn't want to, to pearl that one. If I, if I do it, it's no big deal, but what it's going to do is going to make the stitch below look very weak because you've actually only got one thread there now and, and I can notice that oh I've got green on this stitch as well as the, the natural it doesn't look right this is why it you know when it's particularly when you're starting to learn to knit you've really got to keep your eye on what you're doing so again if you notice something that doesn't look right look everything is white white natural 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 oh natural and green it doesn't look quite right so again pull it out Thread the, the natural colour back on the other needle and just do it again. Okay. Now, 
a lot of this I'm saying is when you notice it straight away but sometimes you don't notice things straight away for example if I dropped a stitch and right in the middle of the row and it starts to come undone okay so there's that white one's come out I've dropped so I should be knitting with natural and this one's a green stitch so first of all is get my needle in there quickly so it doesn't go down another row so as I'm saying this this is lovely wool it's unlikely to to pull right out but if it does so look I've got a green stitch here this is the green stitch from the row below all the stitches on here are in the natural color so I, and I, you can see I've got this big loop here hanging around in behind this stitch so if I'm going to do something about this what I do is I put my needle through the stitch depends on if you look at, you can see the the row above I've got like bumps on them it's a if I, because I'm doing it this way it's a pearl pearl wise so I put my needle down through under the loop and pull the loop through and I've got that back on okay so if you want to watch that again just replay that so that you can see it again I'll show you though second time there it is it's pulled out so as I was saying get it back on the needle so it doesn't you don't lose another row and you can tell I've been this even though I've knitted on the other side I'm, a, I'm on a pearl row at the moment because you can see the bumps so I put my needle through the loop I put it under that loop of wool which is across the back of it and pull that back through okay and then I can pearl it just like normal If we get distracted, it's really easy to do something wrong in a row. And again, by looking at your knitting before you start the next row, it's 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 easier to spot it. Spot it as soon as you can. Now, if you look at all the the natural rows, and when you're on the knit side, it's two knit stitches and this is looking lovely this row oh hang on something's gone wrong here i've got confused and i've changed from i've got knit stitches below but look i've got the bumps up above to show it's like a pearl stitch so i've done it wrong i've, I've used the wrong stitch so what you need to do is we need to redo those stitches now one of the easy way, easiest ways to do it but it's sort of nerve wracking when you when you first start um, knitting is is just pull those stitches off of this needle and then pull the thread out and then re-thread those stitches on this needle just like we did with the ones we dropped but it is quite nerve wracking to do that when you you're starting out in knitting so it's easier to try and keep the stitches on the needles if, if you can so the best thing to do is to put the needle with the stitches back in your other hand as if I was carrying on doing this row and the empty needle in this hand and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take these stitches off of here and keep them on the needle at the same time okay so I put my need my empty needle through the stitch below take it off and then just pull that stitch out so I haven't dropped the stitch at all and again here Put my needle through the stitch below pull this off the needle and then I'm not losing control of the stitches so there's the stitch below put my needle through it take that one off pull it out and then it's it's less nerve-wracking okay much less nerve-wracking and you haven't got to worry about oh I've got all these stitches to pick up you're much more in control 
of doing it, but it is keeping your eye on what you're doing. It's so much harder if I had knitted several more rows on top of that. You would be, I would be saying to you, really, you just got to pull out what you, you know, take your needle off of the stitches and pull it back through. No, it's only a while back to, no, I've still got some. Oh, I really messed up there. Got quite a few stitches, which I knitted rather than purling on this row. Uh, I think there's one more looking at it. Look. Uh, one more. Let's try that one. See if that's the last one. I think it is. Typical. This is going to be the hardest one to get my needle through. There it is. Right. right. Look, and you can see. Look, that's where my I did that with my thread. I put it around the back of the the needle, and when you're purling, it should the thread should be in the front. So I carry on. So I've got a cat about to come onto the table. I'll push her off. And let's carry on purling this row until that's done correctly. Okay. Right. So I finished this row in purl like I should have done in the first place. So that's correct, and let's turn it around. And yeah, that's correct on that side there as well. I've just finished knitting a row, and I'm looking at what I've done, and I can this is the wrong side of my scarf. And I can see that what I've just done doesn't follow the pattern of the other rows so if you look normally the, the pattern on the wrong side is like you've got a wide band of knitted green then you've got these thin white stitches then a row of green then a wider row of white small row of green small row of white and that's how the pattern is but if i look at what i've just done thick band of green thin row of white thin row of green thicker row of white Hang on, I've got another row of white there and I have only got a few of the green and then I've... Where's the thin row of green? It's It's gone wrong. And if I turn it over, let's start looking at the, the correct side of the knitting. Yeah, you can see it. Look, there's, this doesn't look like anything like the row before. This should be a thick band of green and it's got a little bit of white in the bottom so I've I've done it completely wrong that there's a row back here and it's not the row I've just done it's the one before so if worse comes to worst it's going to take me ages if I take out each stitch individually here or if that I spotted it was right back down here the best thing to do is to do what I said just now which um we managed to avoid but I'm actually going to have to just take my stitches off my needle it's like the last thing you want to do when you're learning to knit but there you go they're off taking the stitches off of my needle and what I'm going to do now is very carefully and very gently I'm pulling my thread back out because I don't want my scarf to look to look wrong when it's finished I'm going to get this done now Look, and it's this row, it's the row before the one I've just done, that I've done wrong. Now, before I go much further pulling thread out, I'm going to get my needle and just put it into these. These are correct stitches. The white ones. Nothing wrong with these. I'm just going to thread my needle through carefully and make sure I don't miss any out. There they are. Gentle, 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 gentle. So I don't drop any stitches, otherwise that will cause me, you know, if some of them go back down through this loop into the next level, it's going to cause me yet another problem. So I'm doing it gently and slowly and just gradually re-threading them onto a needle. Again, it's 
what I'm saying about this thread. It's a nice stiff thread. Yarn. It doesn't pull back through easily. Nearly at halfway along now. Fingers crossed. Maybe not quite. Sometimes you've got to pull out more than two rows. Sometimes if you spot bottom mistake a long way back. It's up to you whether you can live with the mistake in your knitting or whether you're a bit of a perfectionist and want to make sure that it's it's right, but I just I I when I've made something and I know I've got a mistake in it. That's the only thing I can see is the mistake rather than the the lovely loveliness of other things that I've done in it. All I can spot is the mistake. And it's awful when you finish something and yeah, all you can see is the mistake that you've made. Oh, this is gonna be a bit yeah, so I've got it on. Just being gentle with it. So that you don't drop any more stitches. And I'll, I'll end up putting there all of this green. Have to be careful on that last stitch. I'm just going to leave that last one. Oh, there's what I've done. I think. I think that one's pulled back through. I'm just going to use my other needle to go into these two stitches and that the threads pulled back out the back of that one. So so that one it's gone down an extra layer. Look, it's got a loop behind it. And the loop should be through here. So what I'm doing going to do is I'm going to put my needle through that stitch to stop it going back any further. It's gone underneath the, the yarn that's behind it. And all I have to do is pinch it with my fingers and lift it over the top of that yarn. Yeah, I've got it back on. So there, uh, two mistakes for one. And because this is the last green stitch I'm actually going to put my needle through the back of it before I pull that green wool out. There, got rid of all the mistake. So I've just got to go back in now with the green wool and knit the row rather than purling it because that's what I've done. I've forgotten my pattern. I've knitted the row rather than purling.